Thus, what the church, whatever the early Christians suffered, it was not as the church asserts, because of the new gospel they preach, but because of the old absurdity they resurrected. Belief in literal mythology. Okay, this is why the Christians were persecuted. Because they were believing in literal mythology. Another son of God, number 16, had appeared miraculously, conceived of the virgin born. A third part of the Trinity walked about in Galilee. This was that blasphemy barbarously told. Porphyry had denounced yet a band of fanatics called the Christians, was actually demanding the restoration of this old religion, or this old myth fable. In other words, all of the, 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 the Greek myths, all of the old um, uh, Persian myths, they wanted to literalize it and say that God did walk the earth. And the people were telling them, listen, it's crazy. All the wisdom knowledge of the ages was burnt in the marketplace, in the light of the world, and triumphanted, and the light of the world of reason, ah, all of, let me get this right, all of the wisdom knowledge of the ages was burnt in the marketplace. The light of the world had triumphed and the light of reason had died. That's sweet. I like that. Now, they all tell you that Nero burnt Rome, right? No, he didn't. That was a big lie. What happened was the Christians began setting fire to all the old information. All of the old libraries, all of the old places where they had their all of their all of their rivals, who were down on Christianity, the Christians began to grow in power, and they began setting these small fires as a form of protest. Now Nero, as crazy and as sick as all the line was, Nero used to hold these particular events where even the criminals were protected. It was, there was no death sentence under Nero. This is historically facted. All right? You had life imprisonment, or if you were crucified, you had to have done really something stupid. But Nero was built up by the Christians as being this heinous person who tortured Christians, and it never happened. It was the Christians who were the ones who trashed Nero. And it was the Christians who burnt the churches of all of their uh, adversaries. And then that's what happened with... Um, Okay, let's just get to this. The destruction of all the evidence of Christianity's Gnostic and pagan source was really the first work of the church. It was the evangelists themselves who started it in Antioch, as, this, as stated in, a, in Acts. Speaking, just, speaking of just such things, the Emperor Julian said he would deal with them more at length when we begin to explore the monstrous deeds and fraudulent machinations of the evangelists. And their followers, Edward Carpenter, wrote this. They took special pains to destroy the pagan records and so obliterate the evidence of their own dishonesty. By order of the church, all the books of the Gnostic Basilides were burned. Likewise, Porphyry's 36 volumes were burned. Pope Gregory VII burned the Apollo library filled with ancient law. Emperor Theodosius had 27,000 schools of the mysteries of the mysteries, papyrus rolls burned because they contained the doctrinal basis of the Gospels. By offering rich rewards, Ptolemy Philadelphus gathered 270,000 ancient documents. These two were burnt for the same reason. As someone has said, the early Christians heated their baths with the ancient wisdom. And that knowledge they may have contained, and what knowledge they may have contained. Nor did the destruction end with the founders of Christianity. The fanatics they made carried on their work. The Crusades burnt all the books they could find, including original Hebrew scrolls, Kemetic scrolls, and the like. In 1233, the works of Maimonides were burned along with 12,000 volumes of the Talmud. In 1244, 18,000 books of various kinds were destroyed. According to Draper, Cardinal Zemes, X-I-M-E-N-E-S, Zeminis, delivered to the flames in the square of Grenada 80,000 Arabic manuscripts. On finding similar law in the New World, the Spanish Christians destroyed it and the temples that contained it. All evidence of source destroyed, the Christian fathers could now substitute their own stupidity and absurdities. And to substantiate them, they altered words and inserted verses that did not exist in the original texts. 
Celsus, a witness to this falsification, said of the revisionists, some of them, as it were in a drunken state producing self-induced illusions, remodeled their gospel from its first written form and reform it so that they may be able to refute the objections brought against it. On the same subject, Gerald Massey wrote, they made dumb all pagan testimony against the unparalleled imposture then being perfected in Rome. They had almost reduced the first four centuries to silence on all the matters of the most vital importance for any proper understanding of the true religion of the Christian superstition. The mythos having been at, at last published as a human history, everything else was suppressed or forced to support the fraud. It is well known the Christian fathers were notorious forgers. Even the Catholics themselves admit that. According to the Catholic Encyclopedia, quote, in all these departments, forgery and interpolation was well, as well as ignorance had wrought mischief on a grand scale. This is the Catholics who are the original Christians saying this. Indeed, Pope Stephen II went so far as to write a letter and sign St. Peter's name to it. When we know... <laughs> check it. When we know that, that Peter never existed, these deceptions take on a new meaning. They give the key to the church, entire history, motive, and they give us the keys to it. And the whole motive and purpose, dom domination, wealth, and power. To this end, all else was done, including the fakeries, forgeries, and the burning of books. In spite of all this, we are told the founders of our faith were good men, filled with the Holy Spirit, and therefore above all crime and cruelty of common day. Such is the teaching, yet their own words belie these lies. Consider this from Jerome, one of the original Christian fathers, for instance. If thy father lies down across thy threshold, if thy mother uncovers to thine eyes the bosom that suckled thee, trample on your father's lifeless body, trample on your mother's bosom, and with eyes unmoistened and dry, fly to the Lord that calleth thee. <laughs> this is the Christian zeal, and the very opposite of religion. And Tertullian, who was a black man, Gloating on the prospects of seeing the philosophers in hell and chanting, say, How I shall laugh, how shall I rejoice, how shall I triumph when I see so many these illustrious kings who were said to have mounted into heaven, groaning with Jupiter their God in the lowest depths of hell. And St. Augustine, another Negro on his religion, stated, The enemies thereof I hate vehemently. Oh, that thou wilt slay them with thy two edged sword. And who were these enemies? Atheists, infidels, destroyers of the truth? No, indeed, the keepers of the truth. Those anonymous Gnosticists. Those abhorrent Gnostics. Here we shall recall the, the words of Franz Sweeney. It may truly be said that the darkest and bloodiest records in history can show us, that, that history can show us, are the attacks on Orthodox Church, of, of the Orthodox Church upon the Gnostic mystics. Oh yes, it takes more than ignorance to found a religion. It takes dishonesty, cruelty, and war as well. That Christianity had such a beginning may seem to be faithful, um, may seem to the faithful quite incredible, but if so, it is only because the little that they know about it came from priestly apologists lying for the same reasons as their predecessors. The unbelieving should read contemporary historians, Eusebius for instance, in 250 A.D. That, that A.D. means after the delusion. <laughs> he left a record of the church at that time and it reads like this. And this is Eusebius of Caesarea. He was there at the Council of Nicaea. He was there putting all the dirt down. And he says... But since from our great freedom we have fallen into neglect and sloth, when each had begun to envy and slander the other, when we waged intestine war against the other, wounding each other with words as with sword and spears, when leaders assailed leaders and people assailed people, hurling epithets at each other, when fraud, when fraudulent hypocrisy had reached the highest heights, of malice, 
when devoid of all sense, we gave no thought to the worship of God, but believing like certain impious men that human affairs are controlled by no providence, we heaped crime upon crime. When our pastors, despising the rule of religion, fought with each other intent on nothing but abuse, threats, jealousy, hatred, and mutual enmity, each claiming for himself a principality as a sort of tyranny. And we are asked to believe that these men were guided and inspired by the Holy Ghost. Now I want to read this to you. To cite only a few of these Christians, here are what the Christians... Now you're supposed to be under the whole body of Christ. This is what these Christians...